We've looked at Scrum as a whole, and now we're going through the component parts one by one. Today, it's the turn of the sprint backlog. And yes, there will be a cheat sheet. Welcome to Development That Pays. My name is Gary Strawn, and if we're meeting for the first time, please consider subscribing. And remember to hit the bell icon so you don't miss a thing. The sprint backlog is a list of things that the development team will work on during the sprint. It's created once per sprint, and the event where it's created is the sprint planning meeting. The product backlog, the master list of things to do, provides the input. I think I'm on safe ground so far. Let's just check in with the Scrum Guide. The sprint backlog is the set of product backlog items selected for the sprint. So far, so good. Two properties of the product backlog and its contents are useful slash relevant when it comes to selecting items. It's a prioritized list with the most important items appearing towards the top. And the items, if not all of them, but certainly those towards the top of the list, are sized. I'm going to represent the relative size like this. It's common practice to size using story points. Although you won't find a mention of story points in the Scrum Guide. And if the team has a few sprints under its belt, it will have an idea of its capacity. In other words, the number of story points it can handle, it can process during one sprint. A prioritized list of sized things to do and a capacity could it be that creating a sprint backlog is as simple as taking items from the top of the product backlog until the number of story points is equal to the capacity? Perhaps with a bit of jiggling around at the end to fill the space. If it was as simple as that, there'd be a button to do it in Jira. There's not a button for that. Is there a button for that in Jira? Not a clue. Let's take half a step back here. It's the development team's job to, by the end of the sprint, produce an increment to give it its Sunday name, a potentially, I never say that right, to produce a potentially releasable increment. So it makes sense, as far as it's possible, to select items from the product backlog that are complementary, coherent, all pulling in a similar direction, pulling towards, a sprint goal. The Scrum Guide ties these things together quite nicely. The sprint backlog is a set of product backlog items selected for the sprint, plus a plan for delivering the product increment and realizing the sprint goal. One thing to note that it is the development team and the development team alone that selects items for the sprint backlog. Yes, the other members of the team have an influence, but the final say goes to the development team. And there's another important point concerning adding work to the sprint backlog during the course of the sprint. So what do you reckon? Is it okay to add work to the sprint backlog during a sprint? I'll let you mull that over for a second while I remind you that there is a cheat sheet to go with this series on Scrum. It is imaginatively named the Scrum Cheat Sheet and you will find a link to it somewhere in the description below. Click the link, follow the instructions and it's all yours. Back to the question, can work be added to the sprint backlog during the course of the sprint? Well, the answer is no and, and it's yes. The sprint backlog is Scrum's way of limiting work in progress. And limiting work in progress is important for getting things done and getting things done quickly with a minimum of context switching. So when sprint planning is over, the sprint backlog is locked down. Any attempt by anyone outside the development team to add new work into the sprint backlog should be vigorously resisted. In fact, it's one of the Scrum Master's key roles to protect the sprint backlog from external influence. But that's not to say that the sprint backlog is fixed. Agile development is a process of discovery, and it's not uncommon for new work to be uncovered 
during the course of the sprint. New work that is required in order to produce a potentially releasable increment. Hey, I said it that time. The Scrum Guide puts it like this. The development team modifies the sprint backlog throughout the sprint, and the sprint backlog emerges during the sprint. The emergence occurs as the development team works through the plans and learns more about the work needed to achieve the sprint goal. In short, work can be added to the sprint backlog, but only by the development team. Thank you very much for watching. If you enjoyed this episode, please give it a thumbs up, share it with your network, and remember to hit the logo right here for a brand new episode every Wednesday, sometimes every other Wednesday. Look forward to seeing you next time. Cheers for now.